Watch out, Chloe. Fascination, how are you guys doing today? We're gonna dive right into it today. I've got the Banshee here sitting behind me. For those of you who have followed the channel, you would know that me and Michael Sable are trying to wrap up our Banshee series. And you know, as always, in stupid fast fashion, I always break down. <laughs> it's gonna require me to fix it this time, not being in a rush. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set up the cameras. I'm gonna do a quick tear down of this thing, get the cylinders off so we can inspect everything. So as soon as I get this thing apart, we'll take a look, see what's going on on the inside of this thing, because I know some of you are dying to know why this thing keeps popping O-rings. I've been in contact with a bunch of people, some from Banshee HQ, some from Driveline Performance, but for now, let's get to work. Stop right there for a second. I'm gonna show you guys what I already found before I even dig into the cylinders real quick, okay? So if we look real closely, I started taking this right pipe off, which is the one that smoked more. You can already see, let me get this cable out of the way. You can already see right here that there is antifreeze inside of this pipe. Try and get you guys a better view. If you look there, you can see the antifreeze on the inside of the pipe. So that's telling me I already know I'm, I'm spitting out antifreeze out of this cylinder. You ready for this? Ready? Wow. Wow. Did you see that? Did you see that? That was like a quarter gallon of antifreeze that just came out of this pipe. Unbelievable. All right, guys, real quick. So I know some of you were saying, you know, check the reeds. Um, I'm here to tell you that the reeds are in perfect shape, just like they were brand new the day I installed them. Both sets on both sides are in immaculate shape. Um, there's nothing wrong with these reeds. All right, guys, so my initial response to taking this thing apart. If you take a look at the head here, you can see the center O-ring on each dome is not attached to the dome. You can see the outer ring is still here. It took me about 20 minutes to get the head off. And if you take a look, you'll see the O-rings are still intact on the center of the head. The only thing that I've found so far was this helicoil sticking above the cylinder head surface. So if I take the camera down here like this, 
you can see the helicoil sticks above the flat surface, which makes me think that this was slightly pushing up on the front of the head. And that's what happens every time I go to torque down the head studs, that thing comes out of its hole and pushes up on the front of the head. And that's where I'm imagining I was having uh, blowout and pull through through the uh, coolant jackets in the front here. Because if that pulls through, obviously it's gonna be burning it. Now factor number two, we look at the pistons. This piston is much darker than this piston, which means the water was washing this piston off. The coolant, the antifreeze coming into the cylinder was cleaning everything. And if we look at the spark plugs, actually the spark plugs don't really tell us a story at all. They're both kind of uh, chocolatey looking brown there. And the domes themselves really aren't uh, bad. So I don't know what's going on with that, but that's a whole nother situation. So the head itself looks like it's in very good shape. I don't see anything wrong with the head itself. The domes slide in and out very nicely, um, which tells me they're seating properly. If I rotate, if I rotate my kicker up and down, I don't see any cracks or, or excessive scoring in the cylinders, which tells me that I don't have um, any problems as far as that goes. I don't see anything bad going wrong in the cylinders here, so I don't think it's that. I really think it's these crappy Healy coils. They just, like this one I got pretty good. It's past the head surface. And um, that one I got pretty good. That's past the head surface. And then this one. So that's three of them that I want to have repaired. One, two, and three. The rest are okay, as you can see on the head here. So yeah, give me a second. Let me take the cylinders off. We'll get a really good look at, at what's going on with this thing. And we'll inspect everything in intricate detail and talk about it for a second. All right, guys. So I apologize I don't have a workbench, but I managed to makeshift a workbench out of this uh, beautiful... 1998 white outdoor tractor anyways yeah so the heli coil basically broke off like literally i just pulled that out like it was nothing so I'm imagine when i was torquing it down it probably snapped off as you can see the threads are like all crooked and sideways in there and i don't know what the hell is wrong with that thing um the other two managed to stay intact i checked out the cylinders i don't see any cracks any major scoring in either of them so my guess is there's nothing wrong with these cylinders other than the actual threads themselves so oh i'm gonna go ahead and have this this and this i'm gonna have certs placed in those i'm gonna have these drilled out slightly have a bigger cert put in there with the same thread pattern and i'm gonna change all these stainless steel uh, head studs out for the uh, steel bp racing ones that i picked up because i like those ones a little better and I do believe they are ARP, which, you know, is the best quality fastener that I know of personally. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. We tore this thing down. We didn't see anything wrong with the head gaskets, but it definitely was pulling antifreeze in at an alarming rate because you could see the amount inside of the exhaust system. I'm going to take these to my machine shop this week. I'm going to have these fixed. Hopefully it's a quick turnaround so we can get this thing back up and running. I have the gaskets, the studs and the uh, new o-ring kit for the head. I was actually told to ream the hole out for each of the studs that don't fit correctly, because as you can see, it took 20 minutes for me to get that head off. I had to use a block of wood and a hammer to kind of wedge it each way until I could finagle it off, which that's not the proper way to do it. The head is not getting enough clamping force if it's fighting the studs to go down. I'm told that Chariot has the tightest tolerance holes for the studs, so I'm gonna go ahead and open those holes up when I get the cylinders back and we start putting this back together and I go to fit the head on, I'm gonna trim each of the holes out with a Dremel in a bit so that the head slides on and off extremely nice and then it gets a good tight seal this time because I'm done messing with this head gasket failures. We're, we're, this is not gonna happen again. I promise you, we're gonna hit the dyno, we're gonna race Mike, this is not gonna happen again. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed the content, feel free to like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you didn't already, make sure you head over to Michael Sabo's channel and check out some of his content. We've been doing a lot of collaborations lately. We've been trying to put together some excellent content for you guys. So please make sure you give us a like. It really helps our videos out. Share and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.